Hi, and welcome to this new video about YubiKey, where I'm gonna talk about uh, living with only one key and generally speaking, how you can handle the concept of having an alternate way to access your account or your services if none of your YubiKey is working. And it is a strange situation because usually the supported and the suggested scenario is you having more than one key, two, three, or four keys. So whenever one key get lost or it's broken, you can use another key for accessing your service. Generally speaking, the golden rule for using YubiKey or hardware keys is having more than one key. So whenever you record one of your key with a service, you always record others key for the same service. So you can access and you can use any one of your key on that service without any problem. So you can use one key of your key set. And that's the reason why all the people suggest you to always have two or more keys to live an happy life. Nevertheless, some friends, some people ask me if they want to evaluate the key. So instead of immediately spending money for two or three keys, they want to know if I buy only one key, can I live with one key? And which is the risks? What happens if I'm going to lose the key or that key got broken? And how I can prevent problem if I'm using only one key? So the question is, it is possible to use one key and which are the disadvantages I'm going to catch with only one key? Well, as usual, you need to understand which kind of functionality you are using from your YubiKey. As an example, if you're using YubiKey for TOTP as a two-factor authentication eh, with the Authenticator, YubiKey Authenticator app on your phone, there's absolutely no problem. If you have only one key, usually you take a picture of the QR code with another phone so you can get the key into another phone and maybe back it up in your Google account if you have an Android. Also, you can just right click the QR code that the service is, is, is showing you and save that QR code inside the secure archive, like a KPAS archive protected by a super strong password. And clearly, do not protect the KPAS with the same YubiKey. In that situation, if your YubiKey get lost, you can use your second phone to uh, generate code for accessing the service. And if you I have another key, you can grab your QR code from your backup, from your KeyPass archive, and load again inside the new key. And so in this situation, if you have only one key, if that key get lost, you can immediately be operative again using a second phone, using a phone, and there's no problem. When you get your new YubiKey, you can load again code inside the YubiKey, and you're ready to go. So you can live with this scenario with only one key. A small different situation if you are using the other algorithm, that one used by Kepas XC, as I showed you in a previous video, because in that situation, you indeed have a way to back up your seed code that you are loading inside your YubiKey. So if you lost the key, you have your backup code and you can load into a new key. But the problem is, until you get the new key, you are probably cut out from accessing your Kepas archive. And that is because Kepas XC is looking to the hardware key that is capable of generating the seed code. So even if you have your backup code, you probably need to find some emulator of YubiKey so your Kepas XC can uh, look at the software emulator and it can generate the code for you. Because if you have no such software emulator, you need to wait for your replacement key to arrive in your hand, then you can reload your seed and you are able to access the KPOS XG again. But you know, that's a pretty much inconvenient situation. So if you are using your key to access your KPOS archive, I strongly suggest you to have at least two keys. Well, for SSH, the situation is simple. SSH key are generated inside your YubiKey if you use the SK option, the more secure option, and you cannot extract from the key. So if you have two keys, you need to generate two different SSH key, and you need to copy both public key to all the machine you want to access remotely with SSH. So if you have only one key, the simple situation is just generate another SSH key with a standard RSA algorithm. 
so you can use your YubiKey for fast and convenient access. If your YubiKey get lost, you can access SSH with the old standard plain RSA uh, key stored in a file. You can also use an elliptic curve uh, key based, uh, not, um, not stored in, in your key because you can use uh, any uh, elliptic curve SSH key stored inside your computer, but I usually suggest uh, RSA key in this scenario because if you have a remote machine that is updated, you will only use your key, your uh, SSH in your YubiKey, and you will use the RSA key only in the situation of an emergency. But you can also use your RSA key in older machine that does not support the new format. So it is better even not only for backup, but even for retro compatibility to have a SSH key that is based on the old RSA algorithm for maximum compatibility. And for all the FIDO2 or passkey, it's when you use your key for accessing a service like Google account, Microsoft account, where you only need the key and the pin to access that account. In that situation, you usually have other methods to log in. So as an example, in Microsoft and Google account, you can uh, register passkey, but you also can access with your standard username and password plus two-factor authentication that can be a code that is gonna uh, generated by your authenticator application or you can ask to authenticate with another device, an Android device, okay? So all these sites allow to uh, record passkey and passkey are not only hardware passkey like your YubiKey, but you can also use other stuff like Microsoft as Microsoft Authenticator app for accessing Microsoft account. So, Usually you can only have one key, and if your key get lost, you need to access with username and password or alternate passkey. And clearly, if you enable some advanced protection like the Google Advanced Protection, where you can access only if you have your hardware key, yeah, Google force you to have at least two keys because in that situation, if you lost your single key, or if you lost both the key, if you record both the key, you need to go into a lengthy process of recovering your account because you need to call Google support. You need to um, certify that you are indeed who you claim you are. And so in that situation, it's absolutely uh, fundamental that you have two or maybe better three keys with one of the keys stored inside a safe or where you are not gonna lose it in any way. Because if you lose both your keys, you have a problem. But if you have only one key, you can use conveniently to access your account and having other pass key or other method of login. So there's usually no problem. You can have only one key. And finally, for PGP or GPG, the situation is a little bit more complicated. And you have an option, you can find the link below. Uh, you can have option to generate the key outside your physical key on your computer and load into your key. So you have an offline version of your key that you can use. So in case you lost lost your key, you can simply continue to use your software key that is inside your computer. And when you buy your new replacement key, you can load the key again. But for maximum security, I like my PGP key to be generated inside my YubiKey and not having any way to extract from it. It's the most secure option. But in that situation, if you lose the key, you cannot use that key anymore. In that situation, we need to disambiguate a couple of different scenarios in which you are using PGP. The first one is signing, is certifying that you are who you claim you are. So, for example, you can sign a Git commit. So the Git commit got a digital sign that certified that you are the author of that commit. In that situation, if you lost the key, you simply buy another key, generate another PGP case, and you just publish your new public key. And it's just saying, hey, until this time I had this public key, now I got rid of my private key because it's expired or I get lost, uh, I, I lost my YubiKey. So you can publish uh, another public key and, and, and tell to everyone, this is my new public key. So there is no problem, all the old, documents or commit you signed with your old key still remain valid. You are not able to sign any more anything with the old private key, but you just generate a new private key and you publish a new public key with uh, that is your new identity. So no problem. If you are using your uh, PGP or GPG key for encrypting things, 
there's a whole different scenario because if the key is inside your YubiKey and you lost the key, you have a problem. You cannot decrypt any more old content. So in that scenario, it is imperative that even if you have more YubiKeys in your hand, you generate the PGP keys outside your physical key and then load the same keys into multiple physical keys so you are able to decrypt again uh, the content, what you encrypted. Uh, be aware, pay attention, do not ever encrypt for a long term anything with your public key if you do not have a backup of your private key and PGP because if you lost your physical key, you cannot decrypt anything. You cannot decrypt anything. So that's the kind of scenario where you want to generate your PGP offline and then load into YubiKey in a second time. And even I showed you that you can live with only one key, I strongly suggest that if you are going to use a YubiKey, I suggest to have more keys, okay? I have several keys. I have a couple of keys all, all, always in my keychain. I have one spare key that is stored inside my office. I have another key always attached to my workstation. And all the keys are interchangeable. I can use all of them to access all of my uh, important account. So even in the situation in, in which I lose my keychain, I have a less other two keys. One is on my fixed computer and the other is a spare key that I can put on a new keychain again so I can have always with myself. So even if you can live with one key, I strongly suggest you to have at least a couple of key, better three. Two are operative and the other is stored uh, safely uh, somewhere. So you have the maximum protection. You can enable Google maximum protection, Google advanced protection, and you can always have maximum security with the certification, with the secu you, and you are secure that you are not going to be uh, cut off from your account because you lose a key because you have at least three keys. And this concludes this video. I hope you enjoyed it and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.